Hello, friends. We're back, bitches. Episode 2. Today I'm going to paint an easy-to-build Age of Sigmar uh, Stormcast Eternal. Higher? We just had glare. You're okay. Good. We'll be painting this using what is in the paint kit on the back. And I will be using the Warhammer Paints and Tools kit for the tools and whatnot. I will not be using their brushes. I love Warhammer. Not a fan of their brushes. So I will readjust the camera and everything. And we will get this going. Uh, feel free to get yourself a drink, some nice iced tea, paint along with us, even make a little happy tree in the corners or something. We will be right back with episode one of We're Back, Bitches! In a moment. Okay. Alright, so we uh, assembled this thing, which is five pieces, and primed it with my airbrush, just because didn't have any spray paint on hand. You can do it with any kind of spray paint, and you can also do it with GW's Retributor Armor spray paint, because then 90% of your work is done. I've uh, put some of the Retributor Armor. You see it? Yeah, so it's not bad. Alright, we got that in my palette, and I thinned it down. Uh, there's really no hard and fast rule for how much to thin it down, just you know, maybe 50-50 with distilled water. Uh, sometimes I put a little flow improver in there. And we're going to want to do a couple thin coats. Now this is a base paint, so it's a little bit denser in its pigments than, say, a layer paint. But still, put it on thin so that it looks nice and you don't get too many brush strokes in it. Like I am right now. So I'm going to thin my paint just a bit more. You want to hear us put this around so you can see. Yeah, that's a good idea. You are. Yeah. So you can show them if you want to show them what, why, it, why you're doing it. Perfect. I mean, raise it up there so they can see the, yeah, yeah. why you're... Uh... Alright, now if you look close, there are some slight brush strokes forming right in there. Because of that, and you can see like tiny little ridges of color, uh, because of that, I'm going to thin my paint just a bit more so that it comes out nice and thin. But again, I'm doing multiple thin coats, so I should be able to hide that by the time I'm done. And when you're doing this, you just want to pick out any of your details that are going to be a different color. Uh, you want to be careful of, doing, of getting paint on them. Uh, it's not necessary, it just makes it a little bit harder to go on over metallics with like a uh, light color. doesn't want to stick as easily. So, you want to try and... You don't have to be perfect. You can always neaten up a little later, but try to avoid any of the spots that are going to be cloth. Like uh, these guys here. We know from our paint job that the pauldrons here are going to be metallic, but this is going to be cloth, and so is this. So when you're in that area, just go in nice and easy where, on any of the areas that are touching cloth, and make sure to not get too much over the edges. You know, paint within the lines, children. Paint within the lines. That way it makes your job a hell of a lot easier later. But again, it's all about having fun with it, and it's not going to kill anything or destroy your army if you accidentally get some paint over the line. It's not a huge deal. So, we got our first coat on, and it's about where I like it. Might need an extra coat as well just to make sure we get good coverage. But, not bad. And, we go in here, and we're going to paint all the metallic areas the Retributor Armor gold. Or silver if you wanted to. Hell, you can make it blue. Doesn't really matter. It's your army. You can paint it however the hell you want. If you want this thing bright pink and carrying around some pink lemonade in a can, that works too, because it's your fucking mini. And anyone that doesn't like your paint job, Probably just jealous they can't do it the better themselves. 
So, I'm going to finish this basing out all the metallics and then we will come back and we'll have a look at it and then we'll go on. We'll be back in a bit. Alright everyone, we have our base coat of Retributor Armor Gold in here on all these little bits that need it. Um, two coats probably took 15 minutes if that and that's because I'm over exacting. Now we are going to get our Cantor Blue. I don't know what the fuck a Cantor is, but it's blue. But it's a country. Eh, well, fuck them, who cares? They probably blew up when Sigmar found that necklace and became a god or whatever the fuck. Oh, I'm gonna go out in space and become a space god and find a necklace that other gods will give to me and what am I gonna do? Blow up the cool shit! Sorry, a little bit angry about such things. At least they brought Gotrek back. Thank God. Only thing that's saving Age of Sigmar. For me, anyway. Some people like it. It's their thing. Whatever. Couldn't they have brought back the good author for Gotrek? One of them? That would have been my thought. You know, Nathan Long would have been awesome yes, for Age of Sigmar. Yes, nice. Because that dude was a fucking master of insanity. Like, I was scared... When they change authors, and then I read oh, yeah. Nathan Long, I'm like, oh dear God, this right. guy was born to write Go Track. I mean, William King, he had Go Track. William King was the best. Up at, you know, eight, nine. Nathan Long brought him up to 14 or so. And since the knob didn't go that high, he just kicked it, <laughs> made a damn skaven, put some goddamn warp stone inside of it, and said, fuck it, this will go to 12, 14. Was it now. Nathan Long that originally gave us Snorri Nosebiter? I believe he William might King have us? been. I don't. I'm re-watching all of them because... Re-watching, you mean re-reading? Re-reading. Well, I'm actually re-listening. Oh, did you buy them on audio? Audible has started releasing all the older catalog, and uh, Troll Slayer just came out last month. Oh my god, I'm I so know. ready. And what's I'm in, dude. Yeah. You got somebody good reading it, Liz? Um, it's uh, John Keeble who oh. does most of the Warhammer stuff. Oh. He does a really good job. Uh, I will say this, the Realm Slayer audiobook with Brian Blessed as <laughs> uh, Gotrek is fucking phenomenal. Well, it's Brian Blessed for God's sake. I didn't know who the hell he was at first. He's fucking King of the Hawkman, man. Yeah. And Robin of Loxley's mm. father from Prince of Thieves. Yeah, and Boss Nash. Yes. And I only thought of it, or uh, the, um, I only recognized the voice after... This is really turning like one of our podcasts, yeah, that's fine, go for it. That'll be fine. That's good for painting. They, uh, I heard him make that, you, noise for some <laughs> reason, and it just clicked in my head and it w that it was the guy from Prince of Thieves. He only has, like, one line, and all it is is, you. So, Realm Slayer is good? Is it Realm like an audio drummer? It is. It's got multiple actors. Oh. Basically, the gist... I need to get that. Yeah, it's pretty good. The gist of it is um, there are the Fire Slayers, and they are making a master rune of power. The Fire Slayers actually take runecraft a bit to the next level, and they uh, uh, meld it with their flesh while it's still red hot. And the blood of a fire slayer, fire slayer can unleash the rune magic, making them stronger and faster and whatnot. Because if you've got fantasy space marine guys, you need to bump everyone up just a notch. You probably don't need to. No. Warhammer dwarves are pretty badass. Warhammer dwarves would kick the shit out of any of them. And it's really driven home when Gotrek walks out of the volcano fields. <laughs> just dangling behind him some broken chains from his axes and all kinds of shit. He thinks that the Chaos Gods are playing a trick on him because he finds a bunch of what he calls at first Chaos Dwarves. <laughs> Goddamn Chaos Dwarves make with fire coming out of their beards. What kind of trick is being played on me now? And, uh, well, one of the Fire Dwarves gets uppity with him, so he bites his nose off. <laughs> and... They're, you know, they have rune strength and all this shit, and he, one of them grabs him, and he just grabs the other one, doesn't have any runes, nothing, <laughs> just holds him there, 
kind of yawns a bit like, well, what are dwarves come to these days? Takes like five or six hearth guard to actually take him down and throw him in a cell. But he walks out of the realm of chaos like, for, you know, he's been fighting for, well, the equivalent of a few thousand years, I guess. In real terms, I think, or real time, I think it was like 5,000 years. He doesn't know any better because it's chaos. Who the fuck knows anymore? Hmm. But he comes out and has no clue what's going on. Why the fuck any of this shit? Why are there flaming dwarves? Why are there guys floating around and flying on weird wings? Why is there lightning everywhere? God beasts and such. What's really neat is there was this fire drake god beast called... Uh, uh, it's not Ignimbrus. Well, it, one of its offspring. It's the god beast that slew uh, Grimnir. And one of its offspring comes out and sees Gotrek, and he's just like, finally a challenge! And starts bellowing at this thing, you know, saying how a chaos dragon was that he killed was bigger. And just starts yelling at it, and it, like, me recognizes him, like, oh my god, this is Grimnir again. And it backs down after he goes on this long diatribe and he's all fucking happy that he might finally die and it runs away and he's like oh no fun this place is weird I don't like it but pretty much how everybody thinks about pretty the much he new Warhammer he just think more crap kind of feels like he is a character that can be used as a way to kind of look at the Age of Sigmar from the eyes of people who were fans of the old world world, and how they're just like, what? There's what going on now? Yeah, I was so sad. Yeah. Old World was my favorite fantasy setting. Pretty much the it only... It was the best. Almost the only fantasy setting I ever really liked I understand much. it. I like, I like Howard stuff, and I love Far From Great Mauser stuff. I can't believe you never liked that. You didn't read the Liber I, stuff. I've, I've never gotten around to it. Yeah, Liber's fun. I've still got about 15 years worth of back 40k novels to read, so... <laughs> I'll get to it eventually. You may be dead by that point, but I'll visit your grave and tell you that it was good. Mm, fair enough. Anyway, uh, we got <laughs> these areas here that I'll be doing in blue. And in the back here, this is just one light coat, so I'll be putting on another couple coats, filling in a few spots here and there, and then we'll be back when I switch to the next one. All right, we've got our blue accents going. I still just noticed I need to put another coat on the metallic. That is what I was talking about. The metallics really show through the lighter colors like blue. It takes a lot more in my experience to cover it up but I'll finish that up and then we'll be going on with or we're gonna put on some wreck hearth flesh trying to get that squiggle out of the way there we go wreck hearth flesh that's gonna be for your cloth and on this one we got the crotch tabard here which you know whatever Got to cover up your crotch. Don't want that crotch sweat seeping through your nice tabard. Tabard. Or tabard. However the fuck you want to pronounce it. I don't know. I'm not British or from the old English times. I do say penchant instead of penchant, but that's just because Captain Picard said that once. So I just pretty much go with anything Picard says. Anyway, we're going to be hitting... <coughs> Quiet Dog. The crotch tabard area here. And then up here, the uh, Chestel Tabard area. And as I was looking at these uh, Stormcast Eternals, I believe that these actual models are female Stormcast Eternals. Just because of some of the subtle little things. They don't have like the armored bikinis like one would think. And I actually like that. I like if these are females. I like the fact that they're in like full plate armor and they're not rolling around in chainmail bikinis with big ass hammers and shields because that's just kind of ridiculous. Though it is nice sometimes when it's in live action TV. 
but that's just because, you know, I'm a dude, so I'm okay with it. Alright, and then we got some of this, like, tabard part in the back around the neck area here, which I will point to closer up in a moment after I get a first of two coats down. There. All right. So we've got a little bit of cloth there, and in there, and there. Now, one of the things about the start to build box that I've noticed, well, that I found out actually, is didn't come with the actual instructions for assembling the easy to assemble guys, uh, except for this little bit here which all that is is for there is an optional head here that it was a bit confusing because I wasn't quite sure what the hell it was for and it's a, clearly a female face so I think these might just be female turtles at least the leader is but basically with these minis you're gonna want to go uh, numeric order so one two three four five is one mini and keep going uh, but the instructions are not there, so at first it seems it's a little scary because you're worried you're going to put it together and then have to take it apart and break it. But if you run into any trouble with the paint job, paint scheme, just kind of go by the box art. But we've got this, and uh, let me finish putting a few more coats on here, and then we'll be moving on. Uh, Oh, I also primed this in white. It makes a lot of these brighter colors easier to paint on. You don't have to put on as many coats. But I'll be back in a minute when I've finished up the Rackarth Flesh. Alright, children, have you seen a switch to my Citadel handle? And by the way, this is not because I'm the bad boy of miniature painting or anything. I've got arthritis. It happens. This helps. Alright, so <clears throat> we got our uh, clothy crotch covering there and uh, we're getting close children we're going to throw on the rhinox hide here which will be mostly the base and a few little accents here and there which should not take too long got myself my big brush because we're doing the base just gonna Thin up a bit. All right. So, like normal, we're just gonna base coat the actual base now. I'm not sure why they want it to be the Rhinox hide brownish, because it's like carved stone. But, we'll try some shit. And uh, we'll be back when I'm done with the base, which is extremely boring to watch the base dry. So we'll be back in a moment. All right, we have all of our basic details painted. Uh, well, nothing overly extravagant, and I probably missed a few spots because I pre-assembled this like a fool. Recommendation when painting this kind of miniature in particular, the shield here, pull that off before you put it all together. Paint it without the shield on, glued on so that you can get up behind the shield and into a few of these crevices inside. That just will make your life a hell of a lot easier. And now all we're going to do, which is the Warhammer 40k way of doing things. After we got our bases done, give it an all over wash basically. I've got Reichlin Flesh Shade. And this is my wash brush, my shade brush. It's going to go in like so. You might need to thin down your paints in some spots, but we're going for a quick and relatively clean paint job, so it doesn't have to be perfect. The wash, when put on things like the cloth here, it uh, really makes it look like aged cloth pretty well. I like the way it looks. It gives it that you know, like, there's some dirt getting on there, and it's probably been fit out with in the rain and whatnot. So there's some watermarks, if you will, in there. 
some uh, high tri high tide marks in their trousers at times, I would think. But I'm just gonna want to put it in there. Try to be somewhat careful, just so you don't get too too nasty on it. Now, when it comes to golds. Uh, with metals, you have basically two types. You have your gold-based type paints, and you've got your silvery-based paints. That would be your standard metals, uh, lead belcher, the silvers, and whatnot. <clears throat> when washing them, you want to go with either, in my opinion, unless you're going for a weird effect. But for uh, gold, go with Reichland Flesh Shade. It is a warmer... Uh, wash so it's going to complement the gold and kind of warm it up a little bit make it look less uh, museum quality I guess would be the thing you want it to be it's been fought with so you want it to be warm with a little bit of uh, I guess grit or something in it but Reichlin flesh shade really pops off uh, golds gives it an antiqued look and it'll uh, fill, it'll flow into the crevices, and it kind of you know separates. Especially when you're doing a really simple paint job like this, where all the metal's gold, and you want it to differentiate. Because if you look at the necklace there, it's all just painted gold, nothing special. So in order, but it's got there's a lightning bolt on an anvil thing. So to pull out that detail, you just put on some Reichlin Flesh Shade, and when it, it's going to go on, you're going to think, oh shit, it's going to cover everything up. It won't. It will uh, shrink as it dries, and it'll pull out that detail just resting in those areas that you want pulled out. Come on, give me some more, you damn pot. Another small recommendation of mine, if you're going to do a lot of painting... Go on Amazon, get yourself some eyedropper bottles and transfer all your paint to eyedropper bottles. It'll make your life a hell of a lot easier. Uh, especially the inks and whatnot, the inks, shades, things of that nature, because it makes it a hell of a lot easier to dose out drops than it does to pull out with your brush. Uh, and they're the inks and shades, real easy to transfer over, because they don't, they aren't gloopy and they'll just pour right in and you won't have to wait forever for it to all uh, transfer over. Alright, I got most of this washed. I'm going to go ahead and double check everything and make sure it's all washed and not too shitty and then we'll come back for some close-ups and we're almost done. Be back in a minute. Alright, well I've finished the Stormcast Eternal from the starter box with just the paints that they supply. I used some of GW's tools, the mold line remover and whatnot, but I did not spend a huge amount of time on this. It took a couple hours to paint, but, well, I'm ridiculous like that. It still needs a little bit of dry time because it's uh, the wash is still a little bit wet, but it's like 2 a.m. here right now and it's done. So you'll get the close-up pictures when it's fully dried. Um, it's table ready. I think this actually qualifies as tournament standard, at least the three the three color stand minimum, because it has the three colors. At least that's what they give you in the box, so it should be tournament legal. Um, a few little tips when you're doing this. The first off, glue the easy to build minis together. The little pins that go in, just put a little bit of the plastic glue, the GW plastic glue, in there before you squeeze it together. That will make it permanent. So if you do drop this little bastard, the arm is going to go flying away because that would piss me off. And nothing will migrate. Now, one issue I do have with them is they are posed the way they're posed, and there's no changing that without a lot of uh, modifications. Tip number two. Like I said earlier, keep this shield un or off because this one is not built in like the head and things. That's sandwiched in between two pieces. This, you can just keep off. So stick it in place, prime it, and then pull it off. That way you can get behind it because there are a few spots I missed. And that's just because the shield's in the way and I can't get in there. Um, I think it, it comes out, it looks quite nice, I think. I love these bases. These bases are worth it by themselves. Uh, he came out alright. 
and I'm not going to ramble on too much longer, but do all that, and in a future video, I'm going to build another one of these uh, uh, easy-to-build minis, and I'm also going to show you how to fill some of the gaps, because there are a couple gaps in there that are not hidden very well. You won't notice it unless you really look at it, but we'll fill the gaps, and in the comments, leave uh, your favorite Sigmarine chapter, whatever they're called, House Militants, whatever. They have different color schemes. I have a few other Eternals that I will paint in that color scheme. And the next one, I'm going to do a few little things that will make it look a little fancier, like some edge highlighting and such. But this is with all the stuff straight out of the box, and it looks nice, and this... This is a perfectly acceptable and fine mini to play with on a table. So it doesn't take a whole lot of stuff. Those easy to build starter boxes are pretty easy. They're pretty cheap. I think this box retails for like 30 bucks or so. And those pots you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to paint a lot of miniatures. And if I were batch building these things, I could have a squad done in a couple hours by themselves. So that's it for now. More videos are coming soon. So stick with us. Don't forget to like our Facebook and Instagram pages. Uh, Deathcraft Dungeon on Facebook and Deathcraft Design on Instagram. We will be doing the free giveaways. The free shit now giveaways. Uh, cucumber and Nurgle Rot. Don't forget those as your uh, safe words. I mean code words. If we're too late, but have a wonderful rest of your week, or well, have a wonderful rest of your week. It's not quite the end of the week yet, and do everything Deathcraft style from all of us at the dungeon. Have a great time. Bye.